Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, I'm excited for today's video because it's gonna be something a little bit different. Today, obviously I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be playing some golf, but I'm gonna be trying to work through one of the most frequent asked questions that I get through DMs. And that is, how do I stop slicing the ball? Anybody who's just started playing golf, anybody who's been playing golf for a period of time who can't figure this out, it's the worst thing that a golfer can do. And that is to get up to a tee shot and you have all your buddies watching you and then you just hit this big banana slice that just goes so far to the right or left depending on what if you're left or right handed and it's just one it just grinds your gears okay you probably just lost a good ball and number two it's just no fun and it takes all the fun out of golf and it takes all the fun out of hitting driver which is obviously one of the most fun clubs to hit and this is probably the club that most people struggle with the most as far as slicing the ball so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk through a little bit of uh, mechanics on the most common things that calls people to slice a ball. Once you get some mechanics figured out, then it becomes a lot more mindset in the way that you're thinking about it. And then I'm gonna play a couple holes with, I'm gonna play a couple holes and uh, I'm gonna talk through some scenarios about why people slice the ball on the course. You can be on the driving range and you'll start, you'll get in a groove and you'll hit some balls and you'll start hitting them straight and you get out to the course and everything's out the window. Okay, so I'm gonna try to help you avoid that situation. Let's get right into it. I'm excited for this video. All right guys, so I'm out here at Twin Creeks Golf Club, okay? Mexico was incredible. The content's starting to get rolled out. You're probably, you've probably seen a couple of the videos. That place was unbelievable. TPC Desante Bay, incredible golf course, incredible um, resort there. But we're back in Texas and I'm back in the action here. All right, so to get this video started, I'm gonna go over a couple of the basic things that cause you to slice the ball. First of all, the most obvious is that you're coming over the top. But that's not the most obvious reason that you're actually slicing the ball. It's actually, a lot of it has to do with lack of releasing the club at impact, and I think that's probably one of the things that I'm gonna emphasize the most is because I think that's where a lot of people get locked up. All right, so what I mean by that is that, say you're set up here, okay? You set up, you feel like you're nice and square, everything feels pretty good, and then you take your swing and boom. You, move, you lose it way to the right if you're a right-handed golfer, okay? And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna step forward a little bit, is you come down through impact and you're simply holding on to the release right here, and if you see that club face, it's still open. And even with a, even with a good club path, even if your club path is one degree inside, and you still have an open club face at impact because you're holding on to it with this hand here. If you're holding on to it, it's simply impossible to get that ball not to spin from the left to right. So basically what it looks like is you're coming through impact and you're still here. Your hands are way out in front of the club head, club head's still open and the club head has not been able to release and square up and therefore the ball is always gonna spin left to right, no matter how hard you try. So, one of the things that I want you to really focus on this is absolutely gonna take your, it's gonna change your slice forever, hopefully, is to work on releasing that club, okay? Have to practice this on a range because the motion that takes a little, bit, a little bit to get used to because we have such a tendency to hold on because we're actually trying to avoid the slice. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to practice releasing the club here instead of holding onto it here. So you're up to the top, release it here, okay? Release the club through impact. And that's gonna allow the club to square up and it's gonna take some of that spin off the ball. Moving on to number two, um, in one of the biggest reasons that I think a lot of people slice, slice a golf ball is, on top of not releasing it, even if you have, even if you have a decent release, but your body, you still have this forward motion where your center of gravity gets too close to the ball or past the ball, which center of gravity, you could say belt buckle, right, up, right below your belt buckle, if that center of gravity slides too much forward and then you're still really and you're releasing it late or not releasing at all also going to create a lot of side spins so two th the the first two things i'm going to try to say this very simply so that everybody can understand it because i think people overcomplicate things is set up to it make sure you're releasing it okay and make sure that you're staying behind the ball make sure your head is staying behind the ball the entire time so stay behind the ball release the club through impact, that's gonna take a lot of spin off of the ball and you're not gonna slice it 
as much already. All right, so third and final thing that I'm gonna talk about with mechanics, and I know that you might, you might be thinking, that's not enough, I need, I need more as far as mecha mechanics to be able to learn how to slice the ball. Guys, you really don't, okay? Slicing it is very simple. You're actually very close to hitting really good shots. It's just not knowing exactly what you're doing that's causing you to still slice the balls. Now, on the range, if you slice it badly, okay, most likely you're not doing the first two things that I talked about, but you are doing this right here. You're coming over the top, okay? So if this is square, you're getting to the top and you're coming too far from the outside to in, and it is causing it to put left to right spin on it if you are a right-handed golfer, if you're a left-handed golfer, everything is just inverted. So, one of the things that I want you to do is tee it up on the range, okay? Set an alignment stick down just so you know that your feet are aligned square to your target. And then put a tee out here about 8 to 10 inches in front of the ball. But don't put it in don't put it directly in front of the ball. Put it eight to 10 inches front and then about two to two to three inches this way. So that would be right of your target line, okay? And basically what you wanna do when you're practicing is, is practice feeling releasing the club from the inside and then almost feel like you're trying to hit that tee. All right, so that is a simple drill that you can do when you're practicing, when you're warming up on the range, um, hitting a few balls here and there, whatever it might be. That's just something you can do to really start retraining your mind to get that club a little more to the inside and not putting as much side spin on the ball. So those are the three things that I think most commonly cause people to slice the ball. And to summarize that, you're not releasing the club, you're holding on to it, okay, which means that right there. Number two, you're sliding forward, your head's getting, head's getting too much in front of the ball or too close to the ball, so to speak. So release the club stay behind the ball and work on getting that inside in inside to out swing path and I guarantee you we're gonna start you're gonna start taking away that slice now while that might seem a little bit conventional it probably is but those are some of the common things that cause you to slice the ball but what most people don't talk about is what I'm gonna get into right about now I'm about to hit a couple shots and we're gonna talk about some things that cause you to slice it that are not necessarily related to mechanics okay First off, we, you come up to a hole like this where it, it goes to the right. The green is to the right. It's a dog leg right, okay? You see these trees all up, the, all up the right side. It's just dead. It's all dead to the right. So first off, you're telling yourself, don't hit it right. And that right there is a huge mistake because when you walk up to the tee and all, you, all you're thinking about is what not to do, basically you're creating a, an environment for your mind to produce exactly that. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk up to the tee and instead of thinking about what to not what not to do, all I'm going to think about is I'm going to see a shot in my mind and then I'm going to think about executing that shot. And for me, that is just left of the 150 with a little draw and that's going to put me right in the fairway. And when you make a plan and you draw it up and then you execute, it feels good. So let's talk about, let's talk a little more about how you can start to execute those shots. There's no one way to do it, okay? There's no one way that's perfect. And I think that's where a lot of people get caught up. And even I've, I've kind of done that in the past of like, you know, looking at, looking at Tiger Woods swing or looking at Roy McIlroy swing and like just thinking it's so mechanically sound and wanting to, wanting to, mimic that perfectly so that I can get those results. But that's simply not possible, okay? They're, the different, they're a different person. I think that in order to be the best version of yourself, you can't, try to, you can't try to mimic someone else, okay? You have to figure out what it means for you to become the best you can be. And I don't think that's, I think there's things we can learn from, from doing things like that, but I think it's very important that you don't get too stuck on trying to mimic somebody's swing exactly to try to get those results, because it's never gonna happen. This hole right here is, a perfect example and I, I I've sliced it on this hole because it's actually a really hard tee shot from the tips which is where I'm playing from if you look at this right here the the landing area is so small okay it's literally as wide as that house and you have to go through this gap so sitting here looking at this there's a lot of different things that can be going through your mind now one of the one of the best quotes that I've ever heard in golf is a, a book called golf is not a game of perfect by Bob Rotella 
and one of his quotes in that book says, you produce what you fear. And that is one of the most important sentences that you can that you can ever try to master. Don't think about what you don't want to do. Start creating an environment for for your mind about what you do want. And right here, I want a little baby draw right at that greenhouse. <sighs> Just like that. I've made it to another par 5. And this is another hole where it's a it's kind of a slicer's nightmare, okay? You got houses down the right, you don't have much room at all left just it's just kind of a tough shot okay you pull up to it you pull up to a shot like this and there can be a lot of things going through your mind and it goes downhill quick from there so here's the deal <clears throat> you have all these houses down the right and you're thinking to yourself i don't want to hit a house so you got all those things running to your running through your mind about what you don't want and yet that is just the clearest picture that your mind has. After all that, after you put all those things together, I wanna see if I can uh, see that shot going from right to left a little bit and end up in the center of the fairway. Start to reprogram that subconscious to see those shots before you hit them. My uh, stock ball flight is actually a little bit of a fade and that may have moved about one yard to the right, but that was pretty much exactly what I was seeing. I'm gonna hit another one here for fun. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna talk about one more thing that can, that can help your, help your subconscious to start seeing those shots a little easier. When you stand up to a tee box like this, okay, and you see a hole like this, if you slice the ball, then never tee up on the right side of the tee box. That that really closes the hole off to not being able to hit a shot. So if you if you want to hit a draw, tee up on the as far to the left of the tee box as you can. And basically, what this does is it opens up the hole because now I can actually. If I'm hitting a kind of a pretty intense draw, I can aim at the trouble and hit away from it, and it just opens the hole up so much more for me for me to be able to play a successful draw. And you're just aiming up the right side, and then playing to hit that draw, and the fairway gets so much bigger at that point. All right, so my first one there hit the fairway. It was a beautiful shot. Second one actually sliced sliced it a little bit happens but guys i hope you've enjoyed this video okay i hope that you have got something from it i hope that if there's somebody out there who slices the ball and struggles with that i hope that this can help you but just to kind of summarize everything i went over in this video three things that i talked about three key points okay make sure you're releasing the club at impact not after impact don't be holding on to it through impact second um, make sure you don't have lateral rotation if there's a little bit it's okay but staying behind the ball third practicing on getting that club a little more from the inside and you're going to take that spin off the ball so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video thanks so much for watching and one of the things that i want to i'm going to try to this is going to be like a, a shorter video that i do every week and i want to know what you guys would like to see on these videos on these educational videos so in the comments below let me know what you would like to see something that you think that would help with your game, something you think that is a very common thing that golfers struggle with that I could possibly help. And I'm going to do that. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be seeing y'all real soon.